wine lovers trophy wine hunter welcome back to my wine channel today i'm really excited to bring you a, a review of a wine that i got back from my long-term storage very excited to drink this is tetra rote 1999 from saint amion so um the very interesting um kind of story this is basically a uh, small production winery very um, I wouldn't call it garage wine but very limited wine they only produce about 2,000 cases a year and so how I got into this wine is when I visited the right bank I think it was two years ago I visited the right bank um, and everyone was there it was kind of just local people around um, the, the the wineries were all asking me oh, which wineries are going visiting and they always mention Tertoretta Booth. And it's like, no, I'm not going there. But um, everyone mentioned it to me, have you had Tertoretta Booth? And it's like, uh, no. And that's how it got on my radar. And I subsequently have now purchased it. It's really um, for the quality and for the um, kind of exclusivity. It's really not that expensive, but a real um, neat wine, as you will see with this tasting. So the estate has been producing wines since the 18th century, but really that's, um, historically it was never produced under this label. It was actually added to other uh, wineries such as um, Bel Bellefonds Belsier. Um, it was originally called um, Le Tetra. And so let's go to the kind of the modern history of this winery, which really starts with uh, the involvement of the current winery maker slash owner, uh, Francois Micheville. And he really started his um, involvement in the winery around the mid 70s. In the mid 70s, he was just starting out to do winemaking. Um, he went over to uh, Fijac for a couple of years and then came back to this winery. At that time, they were producing wines under the label uh, Chateau Tetra. But um, he kind of took over and made some changes. It took him about 10 years to make all the changes. But one of the first things he did is he did label it under uh, Tertre Rotebuf. Uh, the reason being is there's a lot of wineries in the Bordeaux region that are named Tetra. So he wanted to distinguish itself. And Tetra Rotebuf kind of means, uh, translates into um, the land or the hill of the belching beef. And it's kind of funny because I always thought with this rhyme, Rotebuf had to do with, oh, it's probably like smells or tastes like beef or beefiness or whatever. It has nothing to do with that at all. Um, basically, it's a homage to the use of the land, which was um, probably used in the 18th century for um, cattle grazing. And so they have called it Rotebou. So Francois um, kind of took over the winery in the 70s, mid 70s, let's say 77. His first vintage was 78. But it took him quite a few years um, to get everything um, done correctly. And so really, when you get to about the 90s, that's when the quality goes up um, tremendously. And from there on, it's been um, just a really, really solid wine. Um, so some of the things that he did um, to change around quite a few things. First of all, he started to use um, new oak. The, previously, the winery had used just um, old oak. He used 100% new oak. Um, he did kind of innovative things he made it more organic he farmed it organically um he then um and there's some special kind of things that they do in the winery one of the things is that um their vines are lower than other um most other producers in the region and what that does is actually it heats the grapes a little bit so get, you get a little bit hotter um weather so you get about a degree or two a hotter um weather for the grapes and so it's consequently, probably Tertoretta Booth does better in kind of um, kind of off vintages like 1999, which the weather is a little bit cooler or rainier. They probably do a bit better than other wineries. <clears throat> Second thing he did is he, um, the, the, the other thing that they do is innovative is that they um, actually ferment kind of hotter than other people. So um, basically, uh, mo most people ferment in if they do cold fermentation. Um, Tertoretta Booth actually does it at fairly room temperature, like 20 degrees. Um, it does 
uh, he believes that that gets out the um, flavors and integrates the wine with the t um, with tannins and the oak a little bit better, and um, kind of it probably aerates it a bit more. So it's maybe perhaps a little bit more ready to drink when it's young. He also only uses one type of oak barrel. It's called the Radeau barrel, and it's supposedly this barrel type is supposed to have a better um, technique or innovation to how to integrate the oak with the tannins. A number of other things he does, he's got very, he took the yields down very low on these, um, on the vines. Um, and so, and he picks later than a lot of people. So you get a more intensity and you get better quality. And that's what I'm finding with a lot of play, um, wineries that I'm doing research on. One of the things that you have to do is um, decrease the yields and that focuses the um, intensity of the grapes. You lose a little bit of money in profitability because you have fewer grapes, but um, bet overall for the wine, low yields is usually a, a good thing. The winery is about 80%, uh, the vineyard plants about 80% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Franc. Um, that's probably the blend of the wine too, mostly in every year, give or take 5%. The um, vines are between 40 to 50 years of age. So they are old vines. And so that I think adds to the complexity of the taste of the wines. A couple of other things that about this wine that are special. He, he does not participate in the St. Amien classification system. He doesn't really care. Francois doesn't couldn't be bothered. And that really hasn't hurt the reputation of the wine. It actually has helped people like, uh, like me who like, love wines because it's not as popular and uh, maybe people don't know about it and so it actually keeps the price down. Um, it's still expensive but not as expensive I think as if people knew about it. It's um, really small and uh, specialized and you know arguably it's as good as uh, Le Mandat or for sure and maybe even Le Pin right so in terms of the the exclusivity so um, but those get a lot more um, media coverage than Tortoretta Bouvier. I don't hear much about this winery. The other thing is that they don't use negotiants. Um, they also go through just distributors and agents. And so you don't see their wines on releases as much. Um, so harder to find, the, no one knows about it. They don't do a lot of social media. They don't even, I don't think they have any website. So um, kind of a little secret. Uh, just for people that know about wines and so um, it's a it's a great uh, little kind of winery only six hectares um, of, of vineyards a little bit about this wine in particular the 99 vintage 99 vintage was um, seen by experts as not as good um, it was a kind of it, it was rainy it was choppy weather but um, wineries like Tertoretta Bouf actually did very well so it's very um, it's dangerous to generalize and in fact what I'm finding is with a lot of the 1999 wines I think they're drinking really well right now um, the better quality wines I think if you're bringing better quality wines they've done better in general in general the right bank did a little bit better uh, with the Merlot grape um, it even with wet weather um, it, it can survive and winemakers can do great things and also the um, technology around that time period was starting to get better. Around 96, there was a huge jump in interest in wines and wine drinking and technology and money for wines. So if this type of vintage was in the 70s, it probably wouldn't have been as good a vintage, but um, it really worked out well, particularly for wines like Tetra Bouf, who are very specialized, um, who have unique uh, characteristics and unique fermentation and um, wine selection processes. Um, it worked really well for them. So here's the bottle. Just a simple design. This must be of their vineyard, Tertoretta Bouf, 1999, Saint-Emilion Grand Cru. Then on this, this is the color. As you can see, still very dark um, red. Um, it's got some show some aging because it's not it's like kind of bright red anymore it's kind of more dullish but I would say it's still um, quite youthful it's not um, you know get very uh, brick uh, but you know shows some signs let's taste this wine 
I will tell you that I've had this open quite a while. This is the second day. The first night I had this obviously with lamb and beef. Um, and it was, we aired it for a good three hours before, uh, when we drank it. It's been now overnight in the fridge and just taken out. So this is my second um, tasting of it. And I can tell you off the top, when I opened this, even when I was setting up my camera here, very perfume, like the whole room kind of smelled very perfumey. That's what you get on here. You get some beefiness. It's, um, you do get some beefiness with some perfume elements. So it's very unique. And I think it must, I think it has something to do with the Cab Franc um, in this blend. Very strong aroma, very perfume like. It's a weird sensation because you have a sweetness of perfume, the elements of perfume, and then the beefiness. So it's like beef jerky with uh, Chanel um, perfume on top of it. It's That's kind of what it smells like. Um, yeah, so, and also some dark fruit, um, some violets, some plums, but very, like, it's very perfume-like. So this is a wine that has got a lot going on. I don't even know how to describe it. So you really have to break this down. Um, it's got, an, so, okay, let's start with the acidity. It's good acidity. It's medium body, medium tannins. But the intensity of flavor is very strong. So it's kind of weird to describe, but the flavor is intense, but the body is medium and the tannins are medium. And I'm just continuing to taste right now. It's so long. Um, it's one of these wines that will, you, as you continue to drink it, the better and better it gets. Um, I thought I enjoyed it last night. I even enjoy it more right now. And it's just a, a very, very, there's a lot. When people say wines, there's a lot going on. This is a wine that there's a lot going on. You got to taste it many times to get your thoughts focused because it seems like there's just 20 flavors um, jumping out at you at the same time. So, okay, let's, I'm going to try and, compose myself and try to get this going in terms of you don't normally get this with wines where you get so much information overload um, all at one time so it's got fruit okay so okay on the first taste black fruit Black currants, black plums. There's a toasty oak component to it. There's definitely a cocoa uh, taste to this. Um, some, maybe some char, like tobacco. Um, a little bit leathery. Um, and I'm just continuing to taste right now. Yeah, now it's starting to be... Um, I'm feeling the, the cocoa aftertaste and just the deepness of flavor. It's hard to describe because it's the flavor is very intense and very rich. There's a very, very rich, opulent aftertaste of dark fruit, cigar box, um, toasted oak, um, um, kind of cocoa bean. But it's really, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's very um, intense, yet light and soothing. But that flavor is there. It's whatever you're feeling in the aftertaste, I'm still tasting it right now. It's very concentrated. It's very rich. Um, 
it's not overpowering in terms of uh, so that's kind of I'm trying to describe it it's not like overpowering it's overpowering tannins over, no it's not that it's not overpowering body it's overpowering or intense flavor like concentrated flavors that's what you're, you're getting on this wine I'm getting some spice now um, again, a lot of, a little bit of fruit, a little floral elements also, but mostly dark fruit, mostly tobacco, um, cigar box kind of like, and then the aftertaste goes on mostly chocolate, dark chocolate, cocoa, really great wine. And, um, the more you drink it, I think the more you enjoy it. Very complicated wine, um, perfect example of a wine when people say there's a lot going on, that's, this is this wine. Um, really, really interesting wine. My rating, 93 points. I don't know, I'm going to have it in my comment section what the ratings are. I'm not sure what the ratings are with other people, but I'll have that. But um, really magnificent wine, not disappointing at all. I don't even think this is one of their better vintages, but um, wow, I'm so happy with this wine. Um, until next time, happy drinking.